well it's been like 20 minutes and um, it took forever for the fire people to get there but the fire already spread to the next building looks like it's going down now maybe they're getting it but that was going up a second ago yeah it looks like they got it good for them I have a lot of stuff to package, so I'm gonna be doing that. Tissue paper, man. What the fuck? Am I right? Because <laughs> this cardstock does not want to fold. I think I'm going to have to up my game a different way. All right, guys. All of the lavender tissue paper was in the first 10. Ooh. Oh, red. Man, this book is taking so much longer to put together than any other chapbook I've ever done between the printing, the folding, the adding of the tissue paper. It, it's like, this has been just like a fucking ordeal, man. It's cool, this is what happens when you step your game up. I get it, but man, shit like this, it makes me go, should I just start sending my chapbooks to a printer? Should I just start having my chapbooks made? by a print shop. Bic lighter to rub the edges down. I like the smaller lighters better. I don't think that works as well. I'm just gonna come out and say it. The smaller lighter is on my writing desk. But goddamn, isn't this stapler the shit? Um, just a heads up, I've been getting so many questions about how to make chapbooks that maybe I'll do a series on it. I don't know. I was just going to do a video or a podcast episode about it because I feel like I've talked about it, but maybe I'm not get, going into enough detail about how to do them. So maybe I should do like a bigger full-on thing. But this card sock just does not want to stay shut. <sighs> Don't know if I'm gonna ever use mirrored cardstock again. Now, as soon as I staple all of these guys, I'm going to try to record a podcast episode before I need to actually start going out and running errands. So maybe I will do that here shortly. How many more of these do we have? Like two? Okay. But man, this stapler is making my life so much easier. I can't even describe. You know, I got a lot of, lot of jokes. Lots of jokes about the stapler. And I appreciate it. You guys are the best. <laughs> but it's fucking amazing, guys. Oh my god. I also have to apply for a zine fest in Oakland, California. So I will do that 
when I'm done with this because today is the last day of registration. So hopefully I can get in. Hopefully there's some spots. Man, some of these are going to have two things of tissue paper in it because this stuff just stays together, man. It's like that song. Last one for today, red issue paper. What's the next color going to be? I don't want to do white. Maybe it's pink. We'll find out after these messages from our sponsor. Everybody, um, I am running to the post office, or not running, walking very slowly actually. Like, I don't know if I explained this on the other thing, but I'll do it again. Um, so this, the press's name is going to be Poetic Anarchy Press, because, um, as far as like branding and shit like that goes, Poetic Anarchy already is a thing. I own the domain for it. I have a logo for it that's a monochrome logo that I could put on title pages and on spines and all that shit. So that is kind of cool. So we're going to kind of go with that. And the Bloodshed Press thing um, is cool, but I just don't have anything for it so um i don't know like i think it's gonna be okay with the poetic anarchy press and everyone seems to like that name better and so that's how we're doing that but if you remember i was talking about the kind of like hierarchy system if you came to the live streams where I was talking about it. And I think I'm adding a new little hitch to it. And it's basically um, like chapbooks, like professionally made chapbooks. 
So what that means is people who are like anarchy crew peeps and stuff like that, like they'll be in the uh, poetic anarchy anthologies. And people who aren't are gonna be in the magazine thing that um, I put together. I don't know, maybe I'll just do one of those things and not give a shit anymore. I don't know, I haven't decided, whatever. And then if anyone does well in that and has like some sort of like a good response then um we'll do a like zine chapbook thing for them if that does well we do the pocketbook and if that does well we do the featured poet thing so by the time someone gets to a featured trade paperback kind of thing. Everyone will know that this poet is kind of the shit and you need to pay attention. So hopefully that will be, um, I don't know, a nice way to go about it. Because I think the problem that a lot of small presses have or don't have let's put it that way is that a lot of times small presses have a sort of not necessarily just a niche but like a um, let's see what are you guys going to look at is any of this interesting they have like a niche but it's like, you know, like a social agenda or some sort of thing along those lines where, oh, that's cute. Maybe I should do that. Anyway, but um, like Poetic Anarchy Press does not have that. It's a poetry press. So anyway, like because like we aren't like trying to build community based on a shared social goal. It's kind of more difficult for us to be able to expand as a small press. So the only way we can do that is if the poets that we're pushing, like, turn into bigger poets, like, make them matter more, you know? So at the end of the day, I almost feel like Poetic Anarchy Press is going to be like a goddamn marketing company, but, um, I don't know, I feel like it's a strategy that no one's taking, and that could be part of the reason why, I don't know, why a lot of small presses fail. Because everyone out there says, you know, you gotta find, uh, like something broken and you gotta fix it. You gotta find a hole and fill it. You gotta find a niche and control it kind of thing. And all this is good, but if you don't have, if you don't have anyone giving a shit about what you're doing, nothing's ever going to happen. You know what I'm saying? So there are a few poets that I really want to work with. As kind of like starting out. And there's going to be, it's gonna be really tricky because I feel like in order for this whole thing to work, I need to see if I can actually make, I don't know, 
uh, stars, I guess. I don't know another way of putting it. That's what I forgot. I've been, every time I use cash anywhere and go out, I've been um, kind of hoarding my quarters that I used to keep for laundry, and now I do laundry digitally, which is fucking stupid. But um, I, uh, I, I have this pile of quarters for the parking meter when I go to the post office. And I keep fucking forgetting it. And I'm wondering, honestly, honestly, I have a couple ideas about certain poets I want to push. And some of you probably already know who at least one of them is. And the idea here is, is if I could get these couple people like a huge following and fan base, then doing what I'm talking about doing on a bigger level with people with more of a platform would totally fucking 100% work. So it's, it's very, oh man, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. Um, I have a ton of meetings set up over the next couple weeks with people and me trying to figure shit out. And honestly, I want to say this too. Like, there is a huge part of me that has kind of been wanting a sort of acceptance from the, like, mainstream... Um, not even mainstream, but, like, more snooty poetry world like I want acceptance because I really feel like at the end of the day I think the poetry world all wants the same thing now I know a lot of fucking like traditional formalist poetry people and movements and magazines and what have you are going to be, like, really shitty about all this stuff and be like, well, you know, if it's not real poetry, it doesn't really exist, and blah, blah, blah. And that is, like, I don't know, like the whole cutting off your nose to spite your face, however that saying goes. It's like, if the free verse poetry that I put out brings new readers to poetry, a lot of those new readers will find formal poetry, will find academic poetry, if they love poetry, if it becomes like a new obsession with them. And that's what all this is. And a lot of people, like especially in the more um, academic or the, the literary industrial complex, they do not see, like, free verse poetry or even, like, insta-poetry as something that can fucking move people into formal poetry, and that's fucking ridiculous. I've read, like, when I got into poetry, I got into poetry through formal fucking poetry, you know? Like, that's where I started. So if it was easy for me to start there, it would be just as easy as someone to end up there if that's something that they're into. And this goes back to that whole idea I had about how I feel like there are certain people that really enjoy, oh no, like there are people who are drawn to formal poetry. I think because there are people who enjoy puzzles and who enjoy 
wordplay and who enjoy language. You know what I'm saying? And just because somebody comes into poetry through free verse doesn't mean at all that no one would ever be able to move into formal poetry. That, that whole concept and argument is so fucking stupid. So I found a paid spot. I'm gonna find out in a minute here how much is on it. What? Oh, hell yeah, dude. <sighs> Guess how much time is on there? Some twat put an hour and 32 minutes on there. Holla, that's what I'm talking about, folks. I think it's because I got a fucking bunch of money out. I think it's like one something right now. Normally this means that one of the two people in the post office are on lunch, which means the line is normally really fucking long. But nobody's here. Normally this whole street's packed, but it's not, so let's see. couple packages that I thought were gonna be a little too much that I thought they were gonna bitch about and they didn't which was awesome that's why I like this place like as far as post office goes it's not like a real post office it's like an annex or whatever and um they just don't give a fuck dude and touch wood, I've never had anything sent back from him. But I will say, there was one week of shipments, this was months ago, that everything I sent, nothing arrived. As far as I could tell, like no one got any of the packages. And then like three or four months later, um, this, woman from Canada hit me up saying, hey, I ordered something from you and I completely forgot about it. Um, and I had the tracking number that you mailed it, but I just wanted you to know that it just got here. So it took like three months to get to Canada. So I think what probably ended up happening was they mailed, like I mailed the shit and then they like misplaced it or misplaced the box or it fell out of the box. So like that whole stack that I took in that one day, like ended up somewhere fucking else. I don't know how the fuck post offices do shit or whatever, but that really pissed me off. And I like, luckily nobody who ordered anything like gave me shit about it. I think one person actually did and I sent them uh, another order out, but then I think they probably ended up getting both anyway. So, whatever. What are you going to do? Okay. So, my fast has completed and I am... Whoa, dude. Just because this guy's driving like a fucking asshole, we all have to die? Okay. I'm fucking starving and I didn't want to get like any like fast food shit, but now I'm thinking I'm going to because I really want some fucking eggs. Even if it's fake eggs. I haven't had eggs in weeks because of these ridiculous egg prices. So I wonder if the egg prices at like fast food restaurants are different. That would be an interesting thing. I don't know if you guys saw that, but did you guys see that thing where the guy for Valentine's Day, because they're so expensive, got his wife, like, 24 eggs. What the fuck is this? For anyone who ever comes to fucking LA, stay the fuck away from Vermont. It, the, the street is garbage. It, it's, they're constantly doing construction on it. And then every time you think they're done, like, 
something else fucked up happens, and so they have to tear some shit up. And so you'll have a lane, uh, like a four-lane road, like, squashed down to one fucking lane. And none of the, not none of them, but a lot of the left-hand turn signals don't have arrows. So you just sit for hours. I'm, I'm being um, hyperbolic, obviously. But yeah, they're down in the sewer, doing some sewer shit. Uh, all these people racing to fucking get to Jack's crack. Oh, I am. Hey there, can I get um, an extreme sausage sandwich? Just a sandwich? Yeah, just a sandwich. I need my breakfast meats, guys. And I think I'm gonna drive on the sidewalk because I do not wanna go back onto Vermont. Thank you so much. Let's see if I can, okay, I can't go on the sidewalk right here because this guy is walking on it. Uh, fuck it, here we go, I'm on the sidewalk, guys. Yep, I did it. I'm pretty awesome. I don't give a fuck, obviously. We got eggs and sausage, are you fucking with me right now? I haven't had eggs in fucking forever. supposed to fucking do and my knee is done um gotta hurry up and get out of here before my knee swells up so bad that I can't fucking do anything oh man this is fucking killing Listen to me, bitch. Oh my god. It almost went out. Uh, okay, I gotta be a little more careful. I still have a chilada in the fridge at home. There it is, I see the shiraz. It's gonna be a good day after all, guys. Let's get the fuck out of here. We're gonna try to get to the apartment and get a parking spot because Believe it or not, I really fucked my knee up. Really bad. And I don't know what I'm gonna fucking do. I'm gonna have to just fucking go to the emergency room or something. Emergency rooms in LA though, dude. What? No one wants to do that. It's fucking crazy. I almost died. Oh shit. Okay, so like I planted my foot. I was going back and forth between aisles. Couldn't find fucking frozen turkey. And I saw a sign. And the funny thing is, I don't think the sign even said anything that I wanted it to say. I thought I saw something that said frozen meat. And so I like put my foot down and spun like a fucking dumbass. And my knee just went Like it just made this little noise and I'm like fuck me dude that's it and now every step I take like I feel like the LCL is like completely gone and my knees just gonna bend back backwards and uh so fucking stupid how 
most of the time when you injure yourself, you do it doing something so fucking simple, mundane, just the normal fucking everyday shit. But you wanna fucking fall down a flight of stairs, you wanna jump out a window, you wanna run from the fucking cops, you're fine. Nothing hurts you. You're fucking goddamn impervious to pain. And your body is just like going, yeah, we're not gonna fucking let anything hurt us. Okay, everybody, get out of my fucking way. I'm getting over. Dude, I really hope there's a fucking parking spot because I cannot walk up that hill right now. Okay, parking spot, parking spot, parking spot. Ah! Pay attention to the cars in front of you. <laughs> Try not to drive with your eyes closed, people. These are all bad things that should not be attempted. Okay, I'm gonna cut across Rampart. Okay, are you gonna leave me? Riding pretty close because he's looking for a spot too. And this dude is making a turn so he can get a spot. So does that mean there's a spot right there? We will find one right now. And yes, there is, and it is mine. So everybody can suck a bag of dicks. I'm not trying to be an asshole. Just saying. Now, folks, we're here to suck a bag of dicks. Not me personally, but like everybody else. Oh, and there's a spot right there. Should I just take that? Uh, I'm already here. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.